for your blood type, your DNA type. I'm asking everything now. I need all that. Uh, I'm almost dope. 60 years old asking the questions y'all should have asked at 20. <laughs> we want to discuss all that stuff. Hey, family, welcome to the real shit, no joke show. I got my sisters Nicole Spain and Bikini Body at my side. We Hello. want to welcome all the Facebook listeners, all the Sador family listeners. I know y'all following on that Sador podcast. Ladies, we got a podcast, y'all. What's up with that? We got a podcast, y'all. For a whole year. Yeah. A whole year. We, wow. we on YouTube. They can go on YouTube and they can type in Sador Radio and we'll pop up. They can type in real sh- no joke and we'll, we'll pop, pop up. up. Oh. All right, y'all, it's been a minute and I missed y'all. Talk to me. How y'all been? It got to be time for that check-in. Mental health check-in. Yes. You want me to go first? Well, go on. Um, I'm listening. I mean, I, um, I've i been well, been focused. Um, not sick yet, thank God. I haven't caught COVID. Hallelujah. It's, hey. about, 15, it's about 15 strands of COVID. Just... <laughs> Every day is a new one, so um, I have been protected, and um, my friends and family so far too. So I'm just in a thankful spirit and um, focus. Um, I go walking every day, still in the hood. I ain't get busted in the head yet. Um, we gonna leave that word yet yeah. alone, but I'm listening. Right? Who say the hood? <laughs> Who say the hood is not safe? Ain't nobody bother me. It'd be the same two old heads on broad and area. Come on, go ahead, big girl. Go ahead. <laughs> That big girl part, I'm like, why I be a big girl? But at least he ain't hoeing me. You know what I'm saying? Like, like you see those old men, old men, they just be going. Old drunk men, they will play. Hey, girl, that's right, me. I guess they think I'm Puerto Rican or something. Like, oh, yeah, I'm like, okay. I'm just like, I have my earphones on. I got three pair of gloves. I be, I be in my own little world. But that's all. Listen, staying, you know, staying faithful to myself uh, been doing some um i think uh was it a uh, paneling for like foster care stuff um, come on now hit a few oh. virtual open mics uh, can you uh what's your check-in happy new year to you happy <laughs> new year and thank you thank you happy new year we made it a year yeah, y'all yeah, yeah. we made it we made it past the yes, age of 20 yes. to right. 21. Right. Yes. Now, a lot of people are saying 2021 sounds like 2021. But I said, no, nah, go ahead with that. You can leave all that back there. Ah. We're not doing that. That's so the positive. mental health check-in um, today, we are operating at a 10. Might as well. Oh, okay. Because it's a new year, new endeavors, and every day you get to start a new. So why not? <laughs> Take a breath, take a deep breath, and make the focus that you started in 2020 the remaining focus to keep you focused in 2021. So we on a 10. Now, like you asked that's me that right. on Friday. But if you asked me that last Friday, I'd have tried to, I'd probably get on a negative three. That's real. <laughs> that's honest, you're human. Yes, so it changes day to day. And listen, it is what it is. I mean, ah. I will be a mother of a 23-year-old on Sunday. Aww. So I can't do anything but have good spirits. And you did that. Yes, I did that. I did hey, it. Hey, ma'am. We still do. That, that's, that's my mental health check-in. Yeah, what is your mental health check-in this new 2021? All right, so I've been saying uh, 2021, get it done. Yeah. There ain't a whole lot to that. <laughs> get it done. Yeah. You know, uh, recognizing that 2020, everybody's eyes was open. Ooh, we see so well. I see, I see. All right, mm-hmm. so everything that you see, what you going to do with it? That's the question. Right. What you going to do? It's 2021. Right. Get it done. <laughs> and I'm always on damn near 1,000. The crazy <laughs> thing is like, a, yeah, the crazy thing is situations be happening, yo. Mm-hmm. And um, y'all know we got some new segments, ladies, we've come up with. I think we got a segment called Cut the Shit. I'm looking yes. forward to that. Yes. So we got a, another segment. You know, just just cut it. You know, we got another segment coming up. uh, Is it up to you to say something? So we got a couple of things and I'm going to discuss some of that stuff later. However, Mm -hmm. it's like situations be coming up and they be trying me. And it's crazy. Like, why? Why why are you coming at me like that? Like, what's 
uh, it'll be making yes. sense. And I'll be wanting to be frustrated just some kind of way. I just wind up smiling. And even sometimes if a tear drops, I'll still be smiling because I know yet in the end it's going to be all right. At yeah. that moment, I don't like it. And it's funny because I would say to somebody today, I said, no matter when somebody ever asks me to say, Jay, how you doing? I always say I'm wonderful. I always say I'm awesome. I always say I'm fantastic. I always say I'm well. I never say nothing else. And I said, mm -hmm. the funny thing is, damn it, I don't want to say that all the damn time because right. damn it, I'm uh, yeah. yeah, you human. Yeah. I, I'm sorry, radio listeners. I don't know if that was too loud in y'all ear, but that was, uh, uh. And the that funny thing real. is, hmm. even as I said that, and I was saying it to the person, yeah, I'm gonna take a drink on, cheers on that. As I said it to the person, I started laughing because I said, even at them times, nigga, I'm still uh, amazing and fantastic and wonderful because right. it's not for the situations to break us, it's for us to overcome those situations and get through them. So although at that moment, I may not like it, mm -hmm. I'm fortified to get through it. So I'm still on that thousand. Yeah. Uh, I got a call a couple of nights ago from my brother, and he's in Fort Dix, uh, federal <laughs> penitentiary, and he had just came back from the hospital, and he has COVID-19, okay. oh, and no. he also has the flu, and he sounds so weak to me. Mm -hmm. I haven't heard my brother sound that weak in 20 years since we lost my last brother. Oh, so yeah. it was something of amazement to hear him. He's 6'4", he about 230. He done in jail for almost 30 years. So he looked like he's, you know, probably about he sound good. because he's not on age. You know what I'm saying? Hey, some now. of y'all women do know what fun. I'm saying because y'all be messing <laughs> with them cats. He sounds like money on the books. <laughs> <laughs> but he called me and um, again, hmm. everything is going on, but it's like sometimes that shit knock right on your door. Knock, right. knock, knock. So it's not the neighbor. It's not just what you're seeing on the news now. It's at my door. And I'm hearing yeah. him. And I'm yeah. hearing some of the things that he's going through. And he don't feel as though, you know, they're understanding the situation. Then I go online and they speak about that particular prison, that that's the highest in the country. Wow. It's the highest in the country. Wow. And then when I'm calling up there to find out what the policies and the procedures are, they're not even answering the phone. It's like a big to do. And it's, it's amazing because I understand that with everything going on, I'm certain they're busy. Yeah. However, sometimes I feel like people play situations just to become frustrating to you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's, it's, it's really crazy. Like I couldn't even leave a message. And then I thought about it in the common sense. Well, if a thousand people call and they don't got time to answer all them damn messages. So I guess I understand why you can't leave a message. <laughs> However... <laughs> So it comes back to me when I'm in my moment. It, it comes right. back to me. I'll figure it out. Yeah. But I'm like, it's just, it's frustrating, you know, yet through all of this, I am at peace and yeah. I thank God. And I, you know, yeah. as God continue to protect him and watch over him, heal him, you know, from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet, inside yeah. and out. And I try to remember and remind him of all the things that he said he was waiting to get out to do. So yeah. big girl with the big butt, you still got to tap that. So you got to <laughs> live for, bro. I don't know. Yeah. You know phone That's right. You got some shit okay. to do. And you can catch him a little right. bit later. That's he right. Need but so. Don't stop there, okay? You heard me. He need an address. He need an address when he get out. Girl. Yeah. So I am in good spirits. I thank and I honestly praise God that no matter what I go through, he allows me to still yet find a way and hopefully yeah. be inspirational and inspiring to others. So I am at my 1,000 and that's what it is. Well, that's a good number. That's, that's a, a good number. number. That's a good number. Yes. That's going to be a credit for too. Hey, huh. hey, hey. Off Can the books, off the books, off the books. Off Black the books, good credit. Off yes. the books. Something about that good credit, something about it. Something no. about it. It's it American is. dream, child. It's what America yes. wants, supposedly. So. so wait. So, I mean, I was about to touch that. Because as we moving through, you know, this first hour, where it's all about, what is it? Hope. Health. 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 Happiness. Happiness. All through humor. All through humor. So I know at some point we're going to all take one of those words and say what it means or how we apply it to our lives. However, what you just spoke about, Nick, is very important. What is the American dream? And is it American? Is it a general dream that just had a big house and a great job and a family? Or is it more individual <laughs> person in today's times? Like, what do you think? Um, That's a lot of thinking there. That's not going to be a... <laughs> A two hour uh that's the long that's the ongoing discussion yeah. um i think it's based on an individual like you just said uh the american dream typically is the 
you know, self-sufficiency. You got, you yeah. brought a house, you got good credit, you travel, um, you got good health, you have health insurance. Mm -hmm. uh, the American dream is having um, a security that you usually don't mm. get in other countries. Um, but in individually, the American dream for me is being a creative, you know, the uh, American dream for me it's healing. It ain't got nothing to do with what country we in. I want to heal. <laughs> you know, yeah. I want to break generational curses and cycles. So that's my American dream. Yeah, right. that's the individual dream of my own. So you got the mainstream dream and you got the individual individual dream. Um, so I, I guess it depends on the person you ask. But I know that we all know the American dream is you're supposed to have a good job. You want a good job. Yeah. You want credit. You want a house. You want a husband or a wife. You mm -hmm. want the dog and the cat. You want the picket fence, but not everybody wants that or not everybody can get that. So that's the next question. So if you can't and get that's what I was going to say. So for the people that don't necessarily want that, they they don't want to leave that much of a print on life. That's that's where they are now. Smaller <laughs> is better. So, and they don't want to work for anyone, which I can understand. That's what we all looking to mm -hmm. do is work for ourselves. So for them not to want to have to go in and hit their clock nine to five, is that still a, a, a American dream or is it just their individual dream? Or I say American because we have so many more, like the millennials, we have so many more people that want that same dream now. So I'm seeing it on a grander scale where I know it's individual, but do more people want it because that's where the times are. What do you think, Bikini? I'm thinking I'm trying to share this link on Facebook oh. <laughs> and I'm trying to multitask at the same time. My ADHD is like, just like yeah. back in school. You hear what you're saying, uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> And Sheree, would you like to read from page four? Yes. Um, uh, what page were we at again? You just look crazy like, hi. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No. Health, humor, happiness. Now, where were we? Because the link stopped working for me on the Facebook. So I sent that message. But what did I miss? I'm sorry. I appreciate that and honesty. So we were talking about the American dream and what is it looking like in today's time with this generation? Is it still the picket fence? Is it still having a big house? Is it still, you know, having the stability of working for a company that you feel as though you can retire from versus yeah. working for yourself, not having a big house, maybe being, mm -hmm. maybe not even having an apartment, maybe just traveling and held on Airbnbs while you on an airplane. Right. Mm -hmm. Maybe that, yep. you know, and with more people in this generation maybe wanting that, has that changed to be the American dream or is it still the white picket fence and the security and all of that? It's definitely not the white picket fence because the white picket fence is a mirage. Mm. And these kids are too woke to see anything that has a white picket fence around it. Anything that seems to be that 1950s, 1940s idea. Mm. They don't live by it. And it's crazy that I just had sort of a, a conversation with my son who is having a conversation with his cousins and they're all around the same age, 20, 25, no, that's too old, 22, 23, 24. And their goal honestly is to be entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. Make sure that they have their education, get yourself a house, make sure you put that down, get your credit together, travel, and make sure that you work on yourself first. So, and I've heard that for more than one, and these were black men, black young men. They were saying, listen, I'm in the army, I'm in the Navy, I'm in the Air Force, my son's a firefighter, I'm a carpenter. There are kids that are ki that are not acting like kids anymore with those mindsets. So that whole white picket fence is gone. Their mindset is, I'm an entrepreneur. This mm -hmm. is what the pandemic has forced me into or allowed me to explore. And mm -hmm. then they say, you don't have to be tied down to the nine to five or right. the 11 to seven or the 10 to six. You don't. You can use your leisure time and make that at, that used to be a hobby an actual money stream. Exactly. So the white picket fence, I mean, even when it comes to relationships, they're like, I'm not trying to get serious right now. If they are, they realize that they've gotten serious and it went too serious too fast. And they were given that dream of a white picket fence, which from the people on my side of the family realized that was all what people said as words not as working for them, not as making sure that you're doing the things that are necessary to keep a relationship, the things that are necessary in order to build credit, the things that are necessary in order to get to the house. And mm -hmm. now jobs are going by credit as well. So mm -hmm. the mindset of that white picket fence, mm -mm. 
It ain't no, oh, here's Johnny. And right, yes, I'll right. marry you. And what do you have? Oh, the car, the house, the baby. Yeah, you got that stuff. But is the baby crying? Is that baby his baby from another relationship? Or is that your baby from another relationship? Come on. Is that house paid off? Mm -hmm. Is that house Real shit? Mm -hmm. Is that house uh, actually a rental? Um, is it a dollar house? house that's right yes yep. yeah above your dreams living above your exactly. dreams exactly exactly and my cousin's daughter which who to her she and marquise are a year and a half two years apart she's 25 marquise will be 23 on monday this young lady has a full-time job working at independence blue cross she has her bachelor's degree she is a certified massage and physical therapist yeah. and she just bought her new house herself last week nice new house new car new job nice. 24 no children man. no relationship man. okay okay white picket fence she that doing what i'm trying to do now good for her yeah. that's it good for her yes i'm so proud trust me trust me we are awesome i'm proud, proud. Of, I'm proud of her too Oh, I, listen, I was like, well, you, know, grew up, you know, grew up before me. I, I, I feel like a kid. Wait a minute. I ain't even get to that part yet. <laughs> that's, a, that's a blessing when you a homeowner in your 20s. That's yes. a blessing when, when the light bulb is, is catching on earlier, you know, and her life is going to evolve where she may, you know, her and her little future boo, they could go buy another house. Yes, <laughs> right. you got two properties or he can move in, but he's going to pay the bills. You know okay. Right. No, I'm, I'm thinking <laughs> that hopefully... Right. Whoever she would deal with now is now that's a question. Mm -hmm. And maybe we should save that for the second hour, adult hour, come back to mm -hmm. it. But for the men that that she's attracted to, would mm -hmm. they have to be at her status level quo? Or does it not matter? She's attracted to it, doesn't matter what kind of job he has, if he has a job. Mm -hmm. Mm. And we can talk about that part mm. now and part then because that's actually <laughs> part of the conversation. I just hope she's Honestly. more. It's part of the conversation for the first hour because that is her mindset of what do I want to do? What, what have I dealt with? Mm -hmm. oh, what have I matured? And what do I know? As, and y'all know my slogan. You got to be at least this tall to ride this ride. Mm -hmm. So her, she's thinking on the same left. And she Good. has questions about the relationship that she was in. And she's like, am I going too hard? I have this. I have this. I have this. Y'all see the things that I am accomplishing. However, I have this person that I have been with and that has been on my radar for over, I say college, two, three years, four years in college, three years out of the four. And she wants to have a relationship, but what she doesn't want is to look like she's enabling and fostering something that's below her. Yes. So she wanted to know, listen, is this me from my maturing self wanting this man? Or is this me now for the future me knowing that this person has made these checks and these balances off this list that I have and he can move forward. You do have enough to pass it up. She's at the point where she's like, you know what? I don't think he still needs a little bit more. And this is a young man that has his college degree. They graduated college together. Okay. He, is, he is in his profession, but emotionally and mentally, he still has some checks and balances that he needs right. to take care of. And she's there and she's totally okay with saying, I'm there, and I think I'm okay with saying I'm there. Girl, as a homeowner, you better scream okay. you're there. I'm there, baby. I'm there. Okay. You know? So she, it, but, it's but the same does thing. Does that allow her, like, just because of that, because she is established and she's comfortable mm. where she is still yet growing, does that make you stronger that I am there, so no matter what happens, I'm going to be all right? You know what I mean? It's not like I'm moving in your place or we're moving in the place, so if things don't work, where am I going to live? So now we got to figure, like, is, does that help us to be stronger and more secure? I can't say I'm there. You know what I mean? Because I kind of mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. I guess that would depend on the person and their characteristics yeah. of what they're looking for. And what their standards are, because some mm -hmm. people are uh, don't look at it like, oh, this is something that I have acquired, and now you're coming into my stuff. They look at it more so as I brought this. This is what I brought. What can you bring? And then together, maybe he can bring in more of what's going on with her masseuse career. What happens when it comes to her, and as far as her hobbies, mm -hmm. when it comes to her making sure that she's secure as a woman and her family seeing that she's secure and then building on it from there. So it depends. That's what I said. What do you All say, right. Nick? 
Um, I think um, it's her, you know, it's her choice. She seems like she's going to, she, she likes where she's at. She's, a, she's letting you know, like, I'm, I'm going to stick by him until mm-hmm. he does the rest of his growing, um, each his own. I just know that men really don't, they're not going to get there until about 35 or 40. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Most of them. Mm-hmm. And, and, even, and they don't mean no harm. Some, most, right. some of them, to most of them, don't mean any harm. So I wouldn't even be, you know, with him on a timetable. Mm-hmm. Oh, by, by the time he's 27, at August 23rd at 2 p.m., <laughs> for sure, you know, he better have all this ready. It, right. takes, it takes men a little bit, a different type of stage and phase than us. You know, they say the whole thing, women tend to mature faster than men. Right. Mm-hmm. Firing. Um, I think men are starting to catch up. You'd be surprised. Right. <laughs> it's yes. a lot of men who got their stuff together and make you feel stupid. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I, I commend her for knowing what she wants to do. She got her stuff together. It's not like she they both don't have their stuff together. Right. Either way, it could go, it could go right. They both don't have their stuff together and be working, you know, this way. Exactly. Somebody else kind of got it together. He getting there. But mm-hmm. I just don't I don't want women, I don't want us to keep enabling men. And okay. I think it's going on for generations. And I know I've been one of them majorly. I so, also. And, and then afterwards, we hurt and we distraught, and we and now we, you know, then when women go to different phases, when that happens, right? So, I think she's at the right pay, She's at the right level with her business and her mindset. And I think with this young man, it will just time would tell. And it sounds like she's loyal. What's her sign? What, um, what's her birthday? Her birthday is in. It actually just passed. So her birthday is in November. Okay. So what's okay. that, Sadie? What's that, November? It could be Scorpio or Sag. I mean, at this point, all women just have a level of loyalty. We gonna mm-hmm. work with you, you know? I think that she's a Sagittarius, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, they'll leave your yeah. ass after a while. But if they yeah. into, they'll, they'll stick it out. Um, she, mm-hmm. gonna, she gonna be there for them. I, I, you know, I, I uh, have faith in both of them. Sound like she got it together. I wish I was yeah. 20 or 25 and brought my house. I shed a tear. I said, you are one year older than Marquise and Marquise is still in his room. <laughs> right, but that's his journey. But his, that's his journey. Right. You know? Right. Because some people may get the house too early and then you go on full foreclosure next year. You know, so. Yeah. Everybody's journey. Yeah. He's going to be all right. And he a Capricorn. They're not slackers. That's not right. No, not no male Capricorn. Especially. No, ma'am. You, you better damn well no, know it. Yeah, and, and I they don't like illegal money, they like legal money. They you like, like come illegal on, money. talk about it. He, he gonna be all huh. right. Yep. Oh no, I know he's gonna be all right. This listen, the perfect job for him at this point is eight months on, four months off. Who wouldn't like to have eight months when you work non-stop and you have four months off when you're off? He see the world and he travel the country. Yep. And be yep. on his own with nobody on his back. His supervisor not breathing his hot ass breath on the back exactly. of his back. Exactly. You know exactly. what I'm saying? That's why I got job issues now. I got commitment issues at the job. See? Your supervisor See? Bringing, bleep, breathing on your back, on your neck? No, not really. But you know, most oh. of us don't like to have a boss. We oh, right. All, and most of us want to be independent, you know? But when you have a supervisor, they have expectations and all that crap, so. Mm-hmm. His all right, ladies. I'm... What you say? I said his supervisor is probably at the depot or something. What you oh. call it? Look back, I don't know. <laughs> Listen. I'm gonna leave it alone. I really heard somebody was a hoe or something. Forget it. Never mind. A depot. You said depot. depot. I'm, 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 a depot. Jay Monet, it is not the second hour, ma'am. It I'm is still the first hour. The second hour. <laughs> no. I- the Should depot. we switch it up, Nick? Is this a new year, new Jay? Who it is? Do we need to switch the adult hour to the first hour? I mean, you can mix it I'm up. I'm trying to understand. All right, no, no, because we're going to get through these segments so we can't get to the adult hour. All right, we're going to all take uh, one of these words. I'm going to run with hope. Um, It's crazy because growing up, you always hear the word hope, 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 hope. And yeah. it sounds like it's something you believe in. It's a good thing. You know, it, it, it it's like, you know, it. It gives you the, the, the thought that things are going to be better. Almost a promise that things are going to be better. And just very recently, I seen an interview with Dick Gregory. And he trashed the whole word hope. <laughs> and he said, the hell with hope. 
It's not about hoping for doing stuff. It's about you getting your ass out there and doing things. Right. So it's crazy. So I know we have hope in here and I still like hope. However, I do understand that it's much more than just hoping for things, you know, it's for you to actually get out there and make things happen, you right. know? So, as so far he's, as saying hope, hop. he's saying hop, hop, hop. get your hop, ass hop. Hop. So take the E off and just hop your ass. I don't know. Sometimes, <laughs> you need some, sometimes you need some solid footing. So I don't know yeah. if you be hopping around. But I know that the Bible say that, you know, you got to have faith and works. They work together. Mm -hmm. So that faith is all that hoping for stuff and your works is what you're doing to put in so you can receive something. You know, we talk about that word entitlement. That's what a lot of people feel. And it's like, okay, something should just come our way. Everything not going to just come your way. I definitely believe we have blessings that's meant to be and they want to happen regardless. And that's mm -hmm. along with that grace and mercy. However, we got to put some work into this thing. Yeah. You know? So there's nothing wrong with having hope. But also know that work comes with that. Great expectations yeah. come with that. Maybe hoping you're going to do a damn good job. So hope. hope. Me, me hope halfway. Something. Hope. You hope. Right. Who, who taking health? I'm going to do I'm, health. Do I'm health, Nick. I'm going to do health because I'm the chubby one here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> hey, what you looking at? What you looking at? Um, you the juice box, girl. You juice, juice. Oh, y'all just got a little meat on y'all bones. I'm a BBW. Everybody want to be chunky this year. <laughs> uh, um, I like health. I'm, I'm glad that we keeping that H for health. Health is um, multi-focused. We keep thinking, mm. oh, we're going to be the six ab. It's mentally, spiritually, um, yeah. financially, yeah. Um, economically, because economics and finances are different. Um, yeah. I say with health, if you don't take nothing but a 20-minute walk a day, you better get out the house, layer your yeah. clothes up. White folks been doing it for years, and I appreciate yeah. it. I've been layering up and walking right in my neighborhood. My neighborhood needs to see that we walk in, we jog. Yes. Now, I ain't going to jog because I be huffing and puffing. <laughs> I do my power walk, you know, 20 minutes. Um, mm -hmm. I also uh, encourage people to call your insurance and see if your insurance covers um, counseling. Uh, yeah. That covers the mental health things, some counseling. All you got to do is pay $5 copay. Mm. Uh, some insurances pay for acupuncture. Um, these are alternative ways to work on anxiety, stress, mm -hmm. depression, even your goals. You don't always have to go to acupuncture for an injury, you know, a wrist right. injury. Um, and journaling. Journaling every day, something like a, a few things of holistic efforts. I see, uh, Jay, I see you writing that down. Huh? Hello. Um, yes, walking, counseling, and journaling, acupuncture, just a, a, a variety. You don't have to do every single thing to make yourself right. health, healthy, but pick a few a month. Put a few mm -hmm. in, a, in a cup and pick about two or three out of a cup and do those for that month. Mm -hmm. I will put a variety of different things that we can do to. Uh, work on our health, our mental, our heart. Um, sometimes it's okay to sit by yourself and reflect. You don't want to do it too long because then you might start <laughs> sometimes thoughts and alone time start getting crazy too. You know, we human beings are very, yes. very delicate. You can't have too much quiet time. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to be around too many people sometimes. Sometimes right. out. Um, that's what I think about for health for, uh, for 2021. Just if you ain't writing, you ain't doing nothing, nothing in other areas, at least work on your sanity. If you never was sane, get it this year. If you're sane, improve it and maintain it. <laughs> Can I just piggyback on that real, real sure. quick? Because <clears throat> I'm definitely want bikini yeah. to get in. I'm, uh, <laughs> um, Y'all guys know I talk to myself. Y'all guys know I answer myself. Me too. And the joke is if you answer yourself, you're crazy. Mm -hmm. I'll accept that all day because I come to find out when I talk to a lot of them out there, because y'all my girls, that's why we got this show because we are all in the same sink. But when I talk to them out there, they say some crazy shit. So when I talk to me, I don't want to get me in trouble. I don't want me to have no issues. So yep. when shit don't seem right, I talk to me all damn day long. Mm -hmm. So true. I really do enjoy my quiet time. And Nick, you to let me know as a Capricorn, I really do enjoy my quiet and my time to myself. <laughs> and my thinking is, if you don't like those thoughts that's running through your head. That's one of two things in my book. One, mm -hmm. you done did a lot of shit that you need to get right in your life. If you can't deal with your thoughts, real shit, no joke. Mm 
You yes. need to decipher that's that shit because that's why you unhappy in your own damn head. Is you crazy? Yes. Or secondly, you're thinking about doing things that are not productive and that you don't mm -hmm. want to do. So that's time for you to recondition your mind. I know yes. sometimes when I meditate, I'll be good for a little bit. The next thing I know, I'll be thinking about I'm hungry and down. What time is it? Because the show coming on. Well, ma'am, is this even working? And I have to bring my brain back. I'm like, all right, wait, Jay, come back. And mm -hmm. I, I see myself literally walking, pulling myself, bring your butt back here. What are you? And then I come back to that place where I just was. So I know our minds are going to wonder, especially when we're training ourselves. So right. the biggest thing is, as what you just said, you have to get your head together. So, you know, I just pick it back to say, get your head together and don't think. And, and if you think something is wrong with talking to your damn self, then you really the one with the problem because you should That's only true. tell you the good shit to do. So if you yeah, can't talk so to nobody else, you damn sure should be able to yeah. talk to you. Because you should be able to trust yourself and you what? not to tell your business. What? Right. To other people, but tell it to yourself. Exactly. That's the person you need to start trusting. And if that's that journaling, as you was just saying, journaling, if write it down, then burn it when you're done. But you right. should be at peace within your own mind. She act like she didn't. Bikini, who's she okay. talking to? Look, look, look. Bikini, my, my face is like all it. old. Oh, yes. We got strike. Oh, <laughs> Y'all trifling. Leo's thinking Wait like baby. Listen. Got the flowers. It's she hard. Always it's gotta flowers. Be different. She always it's love. Always gotta be different, ma'am. It's love. I'm telling you, somebody brought this for me, and I can't remember who it is, but I, I blessed, I thank them. I don't yes. use this for like the last few years. I find every little space to. I don't like right. the last two or three years. I still want yes. and I got new ones waiting for me. Right, and you know what the great thing is to touch on the health. When you go back into those journals and you read what you have yes. been through and where you were and what you knew and you yes. helping yourself, this something don't feel right in my spirit. That's first of all, that's that's your intuition. Second of all, that's your conscience. Thirdly, that is your spirit guide letting you know this is what don't feel right to you because it ain't right or mm -hmm. something's not fitting mm -hmm. with your spirit. Journaling, I had to write that down because. There was something I wrote down and I was sitting in my mother's basement when I was, in, I didn't have my own place. I and know. I was sitting in my mother's basement and Jay, no, I sat there and I wrote. I it out. Just, yeah. And I found that this year, like, whoa. That was wow, the place. You were supposed to find that. I was supposed to book. find that. And it <laughs> all, journaling, it all came from writing. You have to know where you've been, yeah. where you're going before you can, when you were younger, you can say to yourself, oh, I already know what I'm doing, because that was mm -hmm. the immature side of us. But as you get into these years and with the pandemic making us sit the F down, 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 sit down, mm -hmm. slow I know down, go fast, mm -hmm. down. Right. Christina, I know, I know we're going into the, the dirty hour next, but yes. sit down so your, your moo moo could tighten up and your sticks could detox. Oh, your pussy tighten up. In your dick detox. That's, that, that's what it is. Twenty and twenty-one. If yes. people allow, if people but allow that to be done, it's hard. It's hard. It's hard. It. It's hard. But at the end of the day, you have to, as you do with the journal, like you said, holistically, the acupuncture, the counseling. We got to do that, and then we we bring into it the humor side because the world. If you can't smile. If you can't find a reason to smile, if you can't find a reason to raise up your eyebrows, because everything that has been going on over this past two weeks has taken me through a tizzy. Okay. When I say turning on the news, when I say turning on anything that's not the news, when I say just the Citizen app going off like crazy. Yep, mm -hmm. especially the town. It's been late. Oh my goodness. And, and, and just to see, okay, I can allow this to take place and I can continue to let it beat me down until you realize I'm really feeling angry right now. Or mm. why am I snapping at people? Or why is it that I can't even focus on anything? Mm. Inject yourself a little bit of humor. Now, I'm not saying, ha, 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 we're going to go over there and crack guts and I'm going to be crying on the side of the road. But a little tune in your head. That's it. Smile. Remember something that you remember from when you did have a good moment. Make yourself smile. When you realize those eyebrows is down, unfurl them, baby. When you yeah. realize your face is down, brown. raise yeah. up those corners of that mouth. Those two things alone. You see that, Nick? You see the difference? You see? That's how I looked 20 years ago. Y'all see it. <laughs> 
And then you got to see, and a little bit of humor. You can do that because people don't realize how important humor is. We can go throughout an, an, an entirety of 24 hours and not smile. I yeah. stayed in a work day for eight That's hours bad. on Friday That's and bad. did not smile. Friday, I did not smile. I walked out of there the worst I've ever walked out. And I had a tension headache and I had oh. a migraine headache and I had my yeah. back was hurting. All of it. Yeah. Yep. All of it. And so what I realize is my gift is allowing people to have a little bit of humor. So my caregivers, my clients, my staff, I let them know when they're having a bad day and they're calling like, I don't understand, this is ridiculous because I went to the doctor and this happened. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> did you just say you went somewhere? Yes, I did. How'd you get there? Well, first of all, I walked in, stop. Did you walk? Did I not just hear you complain right on past walking? You know how many people ain't walking? True. Now, would you rather be rolling into the hospital? And then they start hey. laughing. All you need is just a little bit. And then that, those people, I've turned around so many people attitudes today that are on, mm. that I take care of in the job that I do. And these people were really hurting. Like some people were having, like Jay said, COVID situations mm. and needed a moment. One woman had eye situation. One woman went to the nailery to get her nails done. She's in the hospital. That's two infections, two surgeries. She lost her finger. Woo! I'm doing she my lost own the I am Lauren Hill. I do my own fingernails. Own yes. Fingernails. So I went in that same direction, Nick, because how can you help somebody feel happy or laugh or jovial when they just said, I went to the nail salon, and got my nails done, done. they pushed my cuticle back too far, now you infected me and I have an infection. I needed two surgeries and lost my finger. Bang. So Ooh. I said, so <laughs> I said, <laughs> listen, you, if, you can, if you can muster it up, just you know, you, you ain't never cake. got to point at that fool ever again. Because guess what? You ain't got that pointer finger no more. You ain't making no more points. Just think you know what? You can use some other fingers to call that lawyer. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Okay. Run me my money. Run Play my, Play my money. Up. Run the change. Oh, you want to Okay. Do so you know more. the place? that the person has to be for them to even be able to understand that. And so many of us live on guard all the damn time with the wall up all the damn time. Mm, you trying yeah. to say something to lift their spirits. They already, what the hell? Right. Beautiful that, you know, God is, uh, is allowing people to be receptive to what you're saying because yes. you could be hitting the wall and it's right. so accepting what you're saying. And that's a beautiful yeah. thing. That's what it should be. Hopefully, that's what our listeners are doing right now on the real shit. No joke show. Power by Sador Radio. Radio. Coming to us on Sador Podcast. If you're on Facebook and you're not familiar with Sador, you need to be. You can that's upload. It. I think you can download it. You can install it. And it's all free. <laughs> what? It's free. It's not it's much free. I know that's free. And the stuff that's free, you don't want. However, <laughs> you want this. Just look who you got. You got Bikini Body. You got, yeah. girl, and you got your girl, Jay. Coming to you live. Well, on the real shit, no joke show. All right, guys. Cut the shit. Cut the shit. Cut the shit. It's, it's cut, cut the shit. The shit. Got, anybody got scissors and a pair of knives? Look, right, telephone number if y'all want to call in. Fingers crossed that it's working. <laughs> 215 Spoon the shit. 909 Six zero seven zero. Cut the shit. Oh, oh wait, wait, wait. Hold on, Jay. What the? <laughs> I'm not playing no <laughs> games. I'm here to cut the shit. Wait, oh, that's the old. I think she shit. got it. Look at what she played. I'm not up. messing with her. Your knees, but yeah. That's right, Nick. But those look that's pretty sharp, close. Nick. Those look pretty sharp. Yeah, but it's stiff. I need that oil. I need to grease up the joint. Oh, okay. I'm just saying. You ever cut so much or cut something that's so hard and your, your knuckles and your fingers kind of lock up on you and they get caught in the damn scissors? You be like trying to get you. All right, probably just me. I'm getting old. No, 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 not just you. Because sometimes you might need to make a deeper cut. Dang, Bikini, you got some nice knives. Well, you know, that's when you got to cut your shit. When you got real shit on cut. You order your shit off QVC. <laughs> All right, y'all. This, this, is, this is what's going on. Yes. I was sitting watching the news, which Bikini be like, Jay, stop watching the news. I was watching the news and I was watching the weather. I should be safe with watching the weather. Mm -hmm. And the man said, 
it's going to be 44 degrees outside. And he was like, and that's going to be warm. He said, in 44 in January is much warmer than 44 in like November. Mm -hmm. Nigga, what? Wait a minute. 44 degrees in January. January, that's between December and February, the coldest months of the year. I should know my birthday's on Tuesday. I've never had a warm birthday. I should know. Versus 44 in November, when you haven't even hit the winter stolas. You, you haven't even hit it yet. That's December the 21st. Nigga, cut the shit. Cut the, stop thinking you can say anything to us and that's going to just fly. Cut the, cut the shit. I'm not playing. So that's where my brain was at when I first came up with it. And then today, I was on my way home. Can't wait to get to y'all and have a show. And I'm in traffic. I'm on uh, Cotman Avenue. Both y'all familiar with it, more Cotman. Mm -hmm. And there's a bus in one lane that's at the light. And there's a truck in the other lane that's at the light. So I said, all right, well, common sense. I'm going to get in the truck lane because I know the bus is going to stop at every corner. It's the bus. Mm -hmm. I go here and I get in the truck lane. Well, like, Two, almost a minute and a half of cars just went by me while I'm still sitting. The truck is waiting to turn. So I'm in the truck lane thinking I'm going some damn weird. I had to tell myself, slow down, go fast. Cause I'm up there trying to edge out, edge out. By the time I was able to edge out, the car in front of me just proceeded on. I was like, you know what, Jay, cut your shit. Cut your shit. You cut your down. shit. So cut your I'm gonna cut my own shit on it. Cut your own shit. I'm gonna calm cut down. Your own shit. <laughs> cut your own shit. Lord, cut the shit. What you got going on, Bikini? What you cutting over there? Whoo! I got some shit to cut that I already done cut. What I did Ooh. cut is the fact of me biting my tongue. Ooh. I'm not biting my tongue. No, nope. cut the shit. Cut the <laughs> shit. Put out swords. Cut the shit. She put go, go, listen. <laughs> I'm what kind of what kind of cut? <laughs> that kind. Of, that kind. Bikini, we we not getting out of jail. We, I was in jail to get before last. You, we not getting you right. out of jail this year. <laughs> shit. Oh, okay, shit. fine. I'll put the cover back on it. But guess Jim what? Man, set up Thank a GoFundMe. Uh. <laughs> so you no longer biting your tongue. What situation? I'm no longer there? biting my tongue. You know All why? Right. Because there are certain things. Instead of we we have a habit. I. Hmm. have developed a habit hmm. of trying to save people's feelings and emotions. Mm. Trying to find a way to say things so that it doesn't make someone's emotion go all over or make them feel, and then I thereby no longer get my point across. Mm. Hmm. Done. What I'm saying is, when you know that you want to say something to somebody, don't pussyfoot around it. Just say it straight up. Oh, I'm learning that. I'm getting there. Say it straight up. If you feel like the energy of somebody is not good, say it straight up and you don't have to be around it. Mm. If you feel like you have moved on and you feel like that person that you were is someone that they latched on to, talk about it with them. Listen, I know I may be changing, mm -hmm. but guess what? These are, the ple these are the places that I used to go and these are the type of things that I used to find myself in the middle of and I know better now. Ooh. I'm not going to allow my energy to change. I'm not going to bullshit. I'm cutting the shit. I am doing what? Cut the shit. She you got see that? You see it came off by itself. <laughs> <laughs> it came off by itself, right? This motherfucker got swords in the crib. You got to cut the shit sometimes. I mean, I had a case for an example where I had a friend. I had a friend that didn't... Um, I had a friend who had a friend who had did something that I didn't like. And I know I valued the friendship of my friend. And so mm -hmm. instead of me feeling like I should just straight up tell my friend how mm -hmm. I, what this situation was, what the action was, mm -hmm. I found a way to sing song dance around. It. And mm -hmm. I had someone say to me, just say it. It's so much easier to just say it. Why are you dancing and shucking and jiving? No more shuck, no more job. I'm cutting that shit. So if you see Bikini in 2021, Come Please on. believe that I am giving you the raw me. I am grown. I can take it back. Trust. Right. right. I so can take it back. Just, yes. It's a, it's, a, it's a certain form of honesty. Put that H in there. <laughs> okay. Let me, let me write that down. Because <laughs> it's hard. It's hard for us. I don't think you a liar. Or, or yeah. you know, the church tells you, oh, just 
be an honest person and trustworthy. It takes time. That's not easy to be honest and straight up with people, which is communication. A lot of yeah. us are not good communicators. Even the best communicator still needs work. So mm-hmm. when you think of communication, it has to be honest and brave and effective. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. So it's a, I'm gonna a, add that shit. Being straight up and direct, that's some work. Yeah. Because you don't want to hurt yeah. people's feelings. You don't want right. to write the vote. I don't right. want to lose no friends. I don't want right. no shit. But honesty in the long run is going to get you the people who are supposed to be around you. You better exactly. know it. Say and it again, a peace of mind brave. while you're getting there. It's brave because a lot of people, we have a hard time. I, I'm I'm dealing with the same. I'm not dealing like it's a bad thing, but mm-hmm. reflectively, I want to know how to get to the point. I want to stop harboring. I'm not a harbor anyway, another H. Um, yes. I don't want to harbor. I don't mm-hmm. want to check the on scene because you're not a child. Right. But I'm going to take it for a little while. I'm going to process it and I'm going to say how I feel. Yep. So the yep. whole normal stuff. Yeah. Like how I feel. That's kind of being fake, you know, to a certain degree. Okay. So I like it. Cut it. Cut it. All right, Nick. So what shit you cutting? What you what doing? What shit you cutting? Um, okay, so we, we, we talking about communication, cutting being straight up. Mm-hmm. And yours was cut the shit with just taking your time, right? Pretty much mm-hmm. with the driving. Um, mine is cutting the shit when I go on dates and I hear, I hear the writing on the wall. I see it, but mm-hmm. I hear it. And it's time to cut the shit. Not that I've been, I've been on the, I've been on that for like the last year, but I went on a, a social distance date. Yes. Okay. New shit. It's great. It's great. Right. It's great. Right. Uh, I went on a social distance date okay. and very nice energy. Uh, but you know, as you get older, you you do less talking and you let them yeah. talk, right? You said this yeah. is segments. Um, you let them talk. So uh 38, 39 year old man got you know, I didn't realize he had kids, no problem. Kids is never the problem, it's the people who had them. So <laughs> eleven year old, eight year old, and a one year old. Um, he been single for four years. First of all, that one year old is arsenal flags. Okay. Yes. Not arsenal what? Arsenal. They on fire. Uh, so he said he's single. He's been single for four years. Uh-huh. He's an 11 year old, an eight year old, and a one year old. But you've been single for four years. Yes. That's some reckless behavior, player. So I said, well, how many baby moms? One. So I guess the love's still there. So he said he's single. And I said, you want to date? Like, I didn't I didn't come at him. You know, he's a right, 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 right. Because he's being honest. He's in public. Um, I don't want to get cursed out. You know, mm-hmm. and you, you want to know how to talk to people. So I just, I said, mm-hmm. um, I said, you've been single for four years and you have a one, a one and a half year old son. He was like, yeah. I said, and you have by the same woman. He said, well, we was together for like a year or two with the first one. We broke up and we, and she said, she just want to have kids with me. Where is that? Damn it, where is that? I need some bigger scissors. I I said, some larger. I said, why are you here? He was like, what you mean? I said, why are you here? Shit. I'm not telling you this over the phone and texting you because I'm I'm a ghost your ass, but I'm gonna tell right. you I'm a ghost you. I was like, why are you why are we here? He was like, what you mean? I said, that one year old, I said, you still screwing her. He couldn't even respond right away. He said, No, I'm not, ain't nothing to worry about. You know, I was like, no, this is this is after when we got home. You know how you people check in. Oh, I really want to see you yes. a good time. He said, what about you? I said, I had a good time. I said, but one thing, like you said, I'm speaking up because I mm-hmm. used to do that. I said, one thing, because we got speaking to each other, men and yeah. women. I said, one thing, what's that? I said, that one-year-old child and the way you're telling your story don't add up. He was like, oh, that's not going to be a problem. I said, oh, okay. And he been texting and talk, calling. And I just never, I never, never respond. And exactly. that's why it's not a problem. It's not a problem because it's not a problem for him. It's not a problem for you because you cut, cut the all. shit. Right. Cut, cut the cut. shit. Don't, go on people, don't waste people's times. I'm a big rock of feed myself. Yes. Come on. Make a okay. Nice meal. okay. So if I'm going on a date with you, it's because I'm taking out time out of my schedule because I'm 40. So time get real right. limited when you get older. Now time is important now before I didn't get it. But yes. now sitting at a table, we coming out. He came all the way from the other side of town. So you drove longer. 
So uh-huh. I'm sitting here and you're wasting my time. Right. Mm-hmm. When you really in a relationship with something and somebody. Right. They go back. So it's called cutting the shit. It's called Cut making shit. standards. Cutting the shit, yes. setting standards. Yes. And cutting the shit and, and setting and standards. Why you're cutting them. I yes. tell you why. Yeah. Go Ladies, ahead. I salute you. For yeah. cutting the shit. Ghosting is immature. So tell people why you're not feeling them. Te- exactly. You, why not tell them? We are not we too old. Anymore. We too, too old. old. Well, yes. we already are in a Delta.